Well, it's nice to, nice to speak with you today, Bill. Um, look forward to hearing your views on uh, procurement business partnering. Uh, can, you start, can you start by providing a brief background of yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, Dustin, I've been uh, nine years as an independent uh, consultant and nine years before that in purchasing in corporate and life sciences. Uh, and uh, before that, I was in sales and product management. So a fairly mixed commercial background. Uh, now I help companies uh, move um, into new areas of procurement uh, and what I'm seeing a lot of is companies that uh, are that want to go into internal business partnering. Can you talk about more about that? Why is it important? Sure. We've had category management for some years, which has been mainly about cost reduction. And we've been a lot of companies have been through at least one, two, sometimes three phases of category management. And uh, the result is that they have plowed the fields and uh, saved an awful lot of cash. And uh, now um, they are starting to look at, uh, purchasing is starting to look at how it can create value as well as uh, just reducing costs. And in order to do that, they need to be much, much closer to their internal clients. But some of those internal clients are suspicious of purchasing um, because they have some experiences of having their budgets raided. Um, so you can see that purchasing has perhaps a little bit of ground to catch up on before it's fully trusted as a business partner. Um, and, and, and what is uh, internal business partnering? Oh, that's, that's really a, a form of um, consultancy. Um, <clears throat> it is being the expert on how supply markets work, uh, what you can get out of supply markets, how you can manage them better, um, how you can improve their efficiency and effectiveness, how you can extend the resources of the organization beyond its direct employees and into uh, the companies that provide it with important services. Extending the scope of the resources of a company. Uh, can you talk about what was wrong with category management? Yeah, category management <clears throat> uh, was needed because uh, purchasing, uh, because the way in which purchasing was done in organizations about 15 or 20 years ago, it was very haphazard, it was disorganized, um, very local. Um, and being able to consolidate, um, standardize and leverage all of that through category management was, was a great opportunity. But it has led to a reduction in innovation uh, in many companies. And we're hearing a lot now um, about how we want the supply network to contribute to companies' innovation, its capability, risk reduction and image. And, and category management never really tackled those areas. And that's been a big issue over the last few years. So internal business partnering or uh, client partnering is now what a lot of procurement departments are talking about. So what is the future of, of procurement? Well, that's a, a really good question because what we're seeing is that IT departments and many companies uh, have already taken purchasing back uh, into their function. You can see companies where they have IT strategic sourcing managers in effect doing exactly what purchasing wanted to do and used to do, and, and they've hollowed out um, that bit of procurement. Um, the same could be happening in HR where if you look at the average HR department, approximately 50% of everything that they provide to the business is actually coming from external suppliers. So they need to have some sort of uh, uh, core competence within the HR function and managing those suppliers. And they're asking, you know, why would we ask, why would we get procurement to do this if it's, if it's so important? So, the future of procurement depends on stepping up to the plate and learning how to do this procurement part, this business partnering. Uh, otherwise, some of these departments are going to take it in-house 
as uh, IT already has done. And what about value creation? Well, that's a, a really difficult thing uh, whenever you've been looking entirely at uh, cost reduction. Oh, no, we're not just talking price reduction here. We're talking about um, the cost of purchase, all of the everything associated with the cost of purchase, the total cost of ownership and what's called demand challenge, looking at the specifications and making sure that uh, they're not superfluous. All of that goes into cost reduction and all of those are core skills in category management. But um, when we're talking to internal clients in our respective organizations, yeah, cost is sometimes a key driver behind a project, but usually it Usually it's other things like they want to improve innovation or capability or risk re or reduce risks. Or they want to improve market share. Um, a lot of things they, they want to do and they're not re and cost reduction is not always in the front of their minds. And if purchasing turns up to help them and all that purchasing talks about is cost reduction, we don't have alignment. So in order to align with internal clients, purchasing has to take on goals like um, image improvement, innovation, uh, other ca areas of capability improvement, um, and, and, and own those and be rewarded for them. So uh, that's what uh, value creation is. Uh, it's beyond, it includes cost reduction, but it's not limited to it, Dustin. And um, can you talk about how hard it's going to be to uh, make this change? Yeah. Now, the change from uh, classical procurement into category management, uh, which has been going on for I don't know, at least a decade, that was pretty straightforward. It didn't look easy, but it was. And the reason it was easy is that when... CPOs went to their executives and said, we'd like to standardize, harmonize, consolidate, um, and leverage spend. And by the way, there's cash, uh, uh, the, the cash payback on this is very fast um, and, and less than a year <laughs> in many cases. The answer was yes. It was, why hadn't you thought of it before? Why have you left it so long? And so a lot of companies find it pretty easy to move into category management. But moving into value procurement is different. Firstly, you've got to persuade the executive that perhaps uh, the savings are not going to flow quite as easily as they used to, that some of the targets are a bit softer, they're not cash. Um, and the time scales are a little bit longer. Um, and by the way, we need to retrain our staff in order to do this. Um, you can see where the problems start to arise. It's not every purchasing department that is uh, geared up and, and able to do that. Thank you. And uh, what skills are going to be needed? Yeah. Um, these are skills that people talk about but don't actually um, do a great deal about. Um, the skills are things like being able to identify and create value beyond cost reduction, just as we've been talking about. The ability to sit down with the internal client and talk about creating value and be credible in that role. Also, the ability to take, it, to take accountability for service performance after the contract. When purchasing signs a contract and hands it over to the business and, and walks away, that just does terrible things for its credibility. They need to be there making sure that the service performance is right and keeping that accountability. And they also need to win permission to challenge. They have to be able to, to integrate into those internal functional teams and challenge some of their decisions on the way they're managing the supply markets. And in order to do that, they need to be able to persuade and sell consultatively. <clears throat> consultative selling is something that doesn't come easy to procurement. They're used to traditional selling. Um, we all talk about the elevator pitch, the, 
the, the, the 30 second presentation, but they need to be able to persuade consultatively doing. Uh, it's almost like coaching and they need to align with their clients goals and objectives and find out what those are and be able to report those as their own. And they, you know, and to accompany that, they all need some really good soft communication skills, being able to identify what sort of personality and behaviors um, their, uh, their clients have and how they like to be addressed and communicated with. That's, and that's quite a wish list, Dustin. Um, you, you, need, you need a full program of activities to bring people up to, to those skill levels. Thank you, and do you have any um, final recommendations? I think the final recommendations are that companies um, should obviously think hard about this. It tends to be the uh, service companies that are, that are pioneering this area, um, and they include the advertising companies, the media companies, uh, a lot of the internet companies. Um, in fact, I, I saw recently uh, uh, a job description for what looked to any other company like a category procurement manager in Amazon. And the words procurement, purchasing and buying didn't appear in the job description. So uh, those companies are moving. I think the next phase is going to be the um, high service companies, but still with manufacturing elements, uh, especially pharmaceuticals. Um, so they should be looking hard at this area and looking at the transition. And the interesting thing will be for a lot of companies who've never really fully embraced category management, can they go straight from classical procurement to value procurement? Some have, but it's uh, it's a big step. Um, so looking at this area, looking at the skill levels and uh, facing the challenge, that's that's the next phase. Well, thank you for sharing your insights today on uh, pro the procurement um, business partnering concept. Thank you, Dustin. It's, uh, uh, thank you for the invitation. It's an honor to talk about it, uh, and it excites me a lot, as, as I, I guess you can hear. Thank you.